YouTube, this is Bit here with uh, Bit Vlogs for episode two. And today we're going to be talking about my top 20 of 2017 for albums. Now, here's some honorable mentions that didn't make the list yet. And the reason being is because they haven't come out yet. And there's Coldplay's Kaleidoscope EP. Yes, albums and EPs. I'm going to combine them into one. Arcade Fire's Everything Now. Foo Fighters, Concrete and Gold, Foster the People's Sacred Hearts Club. Even though it comes out soon, it is included in the top 20 that I will be listing. So, yeah, it's just because it's coming out relatively soon. Juan Del Rey's Lust for Life, she still hasn't announced the release date for that, so I can't exactly include that yet. All right, so let's get to it. So number 21 is The Chainsmokers, Memories Do Not Open. I think this is the worst album to ever come out of this year. <laughs> no shit. This album is garbage. It's terrible. The only two good songs that come out of it are Paris and something just like this with Coldplay. And those are the only two mentionable songs that were really good on it. The rest kind of felt like it sounded like their journey through taking medicine more than it was feeling like you're in nostalgia. It's just a very poorly produced album. I feel like with this new direction that the Chainsmokers is taking is not very good for them. I feel like they were a lot better when they were doing the whole electronic EDM kind of stuff. It's just whatever direction that they've decided to go in, I hate it. I hate this new album. Besides those two songs, the album's garbage. Number 20, Drake's More Life. And even though he can, calls it a playlist, it's I still technically consider it an album. It's kind of lackluster. I loved his album Views 10 times over this album. There's a couple songs that kind of make it stand out where there's Passion Fruit, Get It Together, which is actually pretty good and danceable. And there's also Fake Love. Other than that, it doesn't feel like he's putting together a quality album. It just feels like your stereotypical like rap stuff that you hear on the radio. It's very like monotone. Number 19 is this guy right here. This is Real Estate's In Mind. This is their fourth album as a band. They recently replaced one or two of their members. This album is just, they haven't really been playing out quality stuff. Their first album was okay. Their second album, Days, was fantastic. Atlas, fantastic album. This one, kind of meh. There's no, there's not really any highlights on this album. Subpar compared to their other stuff. Number 18 is Calm Truz's Iteration. This album is Calm Truz's second album. It's very good as a whole if you listen to it beginning to end. But aside from memory and the title track, there's really not that too many highlights. It's hard to replicate that synthwave sound over many, many albums just because it's everything sounds the same. I hate to say it, and that's an electronic stereotype, but it's true. This album is a very solid album. I feel like it could have had a lot more thought put into it, or at least a little bit more production value. You. It's not as hard hitting as his other stuff. Number 17, which is Incubus is 8. And obviously, like the title, this is Incubus's 8th album ever produced. I'm a huge Incubus fan. It's very classic Incubus compared to their last album. Very hard hitting. Every song in this album, I have to say, is really, really good. Although I will say, if you're gonna buy the vinyl, just beware because the vinyl has some pretty poor quality released to it. One, because it's a pain in the ass trying to get on the friggin' spindle or whatever. And two, just the production quality on the vinyl isn't all there. Probably because they did the standard weight vinyl as opposed to the full vinyl. Number 16 is Vince Staples' Big Fish Theory. I've listened to a couple tracks from it yet. I haven't gotten to listen to the full thing, but from what I've heard, it's a fantastic quality-wise album. Vince Stables never not pleases. He makes hella good songs. They're super hard hitting. His production values on the songs are just fantastic. Number 15 is Dream Car's self-titled album. Fantastic. It's got two members of No Doubt, the drummer from AFI, and they've got a brand new lead singer, and it's just a fantastic, fantastic album. It's got a mixture of an 80s feel to it, like 70s, 80s rock, but also a little bit of like glam pop to it. It's very them. It's very new. It's very out there and it's definitely unlike any other sound you'll ever hear. Number 14 which just came out last Friday is Jay-Z's 444. I've listened to some samples of this album. I haven't given it the full run through yet, but from what I've heard, it's a very personal, very apologetic, and very heart-filled album for Jay-Z. He takes Beyonce's Lemonade, where it was all about him cheating on her, and this is his I Fucked Up album. And he's taking this opportunity to say, you know what, I messed up. And he's making a career-changing 13th album out of it. Number 13 is Lord's Melodrama. Overall, it's just a kick-ass album. It's Lord. 
Come on now. Definitely a great comeback album after not having an album for about four years. I give her props for the amount of time that she took to work on this album to make sure it was perfect before it was out there. Trains, A Girl, A Bottle, A Boat. Now most people weren't too crazy about this album because they're kind of sick of the train boat. This one's different because they decided to take a different turn with their music. It's very summer. Esque. It's very 70s, 80s meets now sound, and it's very different than their usual stuff. As much as people hate the sound, they're like, oh, they've gone top 40, like, they can't go back from that now. No, this is a good sound for them, and it's sometimes good for bands to change things up. Number 11, my boys, Phantoms, their self-titled debut album, phenomenal. It's fantastic, and this is not just me being biased because I'm a huge Phantoms fan. I actually met them and I met Calm Trues at the show they did together in Cambridge. This album's got all sorts of different sounds to it, well put together, and it definitely tells and shows that they put a lot of work into this album. And it's very different than, say, Disclosure. Very different sound. It's got a bit of a Disclosure sound to it, but it's way different. Definitely check them out. I highly recommend them. Number 10 is Imagine Dragons Evolve. Now, I've never been a crazy Imagine Dragons fan, but when I heard this album, I definitely wanted to change my mind because it was a very personal album because he's been going through a lot of depression and he decided to take that and write about it. So it's a very emotional album it's a very hard-hitting album but it's also a personal that does empower you number nine foster the people's sacred hearts club like i said this album hasn't come out yet but they did release three singles or four singles i should say one was just it was called three and it had three tracks from the album and then they dropped recently loyal like sid and nancy and it's a very different take because it's a different direction for mike foster and his group like they they've created that sound for them and they're running with it it's a very interesting album from what i've heard so far i'll have to wait and hear the rest of it number eight is this guy right here, Washed Out, Mr. Mella. I know what you're thinking. Sounds like a stoner album. Well, you're right. <laughs> this album, from a sober person's perspective, is very, very well done. Very out there, very different, and it's just great to listen to from beginning to end. Hard to say goodbye, that's my favorite song off the album. Ernest Green really puts in a lot of effort into this album and you can tell the two year gap between albums. You can tell how much sampling and how much instrumentation and how much he's put into this album. Now a lot of people have different opinions on this album because it is very different than his usual sound. Also I will have to say if you buy the CD it comes with a DVD that has a visual kind of like a Beyonce style movie that has every single song has a visual and there's a different artist that produced every single video for every single song. Number seven, Ed Sheeran's Divide. While this album is great from beginning to end, it's very Ed Sheeran. He doesn't take too many differences after an obnoxious amount of listens because it did listen the shit out of this album and it's phenomenal. It doesn't have a whole lot of replayability. He does do a fantastic job on this album. The amount of new sounds that he adds to it, aside from just, you know, a guy with the guitar, is just mind-blowing, and I think he's gonna run out of mathematical terms, so he's gonna have to start doing, like, Square Root or something like that. Not my favorite, but it's definitely out there. It's definitely a really good album. Number six is Katy Perry's Witness. And a lot of people, this was a hit-or-miss album, similar to a couple of the albums that I listed off. Katy Perry puts in a lot of work into this album. She was saying it's supposed to be this huge political album. Album. It's not really a political album to be completely honest with you. It's more or less like a redemption album It's like her basically saying all right. I'm tired of people treat me like shit I want people to see that I'm confident. I'm cool. I'm collective and I'm not gonna let anybody fuck with me It's basically what this album says and it may not hit stroke you right the first time you listen to it But trust me if you give it a couple more listens it's really fucking good album. It's definitely better than her last album, Prism, but not better than Teenage Dream or One of the Boys. Number five is The XX's I See It blows away their previous albums. There's a ton of good tracks on it. Very well produced, very well done, just a fantastic album. It's really freaking good. So I highly recommend it as I get fingerprints all over it. Number four is Calvin Harris's Funk Wave Bounces Volume 1. Holy shit. It's a fantastic, fantastic, 
fantastic album. And I'm so glad that Calvin decided to say, you know what? Fuck EDM. I'm gonna do my own shit. And he decided that he's gonna do funk, and he's gonna do R&B, and he's gonna bring on the best of the best around and throw him on the album with him. I mean, he's got 19 guest stars on the album. This album is great from start to finish. Separate songs by itself. If you want to throw it on on the beach, I highly suggest it. If you want to throw it on by the pool, I even more highly suggest it. It's just the production, even the instrumentals that he dropped on YouTube, just well done. Really done, really good production value. It's just a killer kick-ass album. Number three is Phoenix's Tiamo. You never put out a disappointing album. They decided, all right, we're gonna keep a similar bankrupt sound, but we're gonna make it all about love in this time of darkness, where there's a lot of shit going on in the world, and they decided, you know what, let's make a personal album. Let's do a little bit of Italian disco and mix in some Italian. It's just Italian-filled, and they're a French band. It's just love-filled. It's fantastic. Number two, Harry Styles' self-titled album. Oh my god, it is heaven on earth, that album is wonderful. I don't know what we did to deserve Harry Styles, because it's just a mind-blowingly good album. Believe it or not, I, n I never was a One Direction fan, despite my love and obsession for boy bands. But then they decided to go so well, and I think it was the best decision they ever made. And Harry Styles, I think he's gonna do way better than anyone in One Direction because of the direction he chose. And he picked the right sound for his voice. He decided to do a classic rock style album. And oh my god, it couldn't be more fitting for his voice. Every song on the album is great. There's no highlights specifically on that album. Every fucking song is good on that album. So it doesn't matter if you're a boy band fan, if you hate boy bands, you think they should die in a fire, get this album. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for is Gorillaz Humans. This album is freaking amazing. Fucking amazing. I love this album. I've been a huge Gorillaz fan ever since Clint Eastwood came out. Huge Gorillaz fan. It took me a little while to get into some of their stuff, but oh my god, this album hits the spot. And I know a lot of people disagree, and a lot of people say, oh, the album sucks, they have like every single song has like a guest star on it. It's a mind-blowingly good album. If you love Gorillaz, if you love when alternative meets electronic and hip-hop all over, it's just a very well-produced album. Damon Albarn does not disappoint. It's gonna be very hard to top this album for album of the year. I'd be surprised if something did. Well, there you have it. There's my top 20 of the year so far. Let me know what your top 20 is in the comments below or on Twitter. I'll be posting this on Twitter if you want to follow me there at BitFox13. You know, just let me know what you thought of my list or what your personal favorites are. I definitely want to hear them. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later.